I'm Danielle from bestproducts.com. Um, today we are super excited to have Molly Battenhouse in the house. Welcome, Molly. Thank you. <laughs> Molly uh, is a Master of Wine and also the National Director of Wine Education uh, from Jackson Family Wines. We couldn't be more excited to have you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so Molly has brought in a feast for us today. Um, lots of summer pairings, a couple great wines to have with your next barbecue, fresh fruit, melon, salads. Uh, I can't really wait to dig in. I'll just hand it over to you. All right, sure. Cool. Well, I should probably start by tasting a little bit of wine, maybe. That so, sounds like a fine idea. Right? <laughs> fine idea. So the first one that I have today is the Barrymore Pinot Grigio. This is from Monterey, California. Um, and we picked that one because it's, it's Pinot Grigio. It's the perfect sort of summer sipper, patio pounder, if you will. Some people like that. Yeah. Um, the patio pounder. Patio pounder. Very catchy. Very important for summer. Uh, <laughs> but also really, really great for some summer food. So it's really light, it's really fresh, and that's why people eat in the summer. Um, so I thought, you know, prosciutto and melon, which is something that you might get in the Veneto in Italy, which is classically where Pinot Grigio is from. Although this one is from California. Got it. Excellent. And what temperature should this usually be served? Like, what do you recommend for a good crisp Pinot Grigio? I would say in about 52 degrees, 50, 52 degrees. Okay. You know, straight out of the fridge is good. People like it nice and crisp. Yeah. And cold. Yeah. Or if you're my mom, she'll put a couple ice cubes in it. Of course. Not that you recommend, but. Well, you that's never a long know. Thing. If it's really hot out. <laughs> right. What's anybody really going to say? Sure. Okay. So, yeah, so this is the Barrymore. So this was created with Drew Barrymore, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. A less wine, yeah. Yes. <laughs> So some floral, sort of apple -y and pears, mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit of peach. Very fruity. Tropical fruit. Yeah, fruity. Mellow fruity, though. Right. Yeah, Not it's like a really mellow taste. wine. Yeah. I already had a sip, was that wrong? I was gonna ask for all the people, <laughs> not me, because I totally know why you're doing it, but for all the people watching, what does spinning the oh, wine glass do? I just do that by habit and I completely forget why and I just do it, she does. Yeah, <laughs> we're just spinning it around. It looks cool. Um, <laughs> It looks really good. It does look cool at this minute, you're right. There are a lot of um, aromatics in wine, and a lot of they're volatile aromatics, so they need to hit oxygen in order to, for you to really smell them. So by doing okay. this, you're oxygenating the wine and giving it more surface area to allow some of those elements to come out of the wine. Got so, it. It's just so you can sniff it. Gotcha. Yeah. And it does smell even more. It does when you do that, right? You That's can even, if you're careful, like shake it up if you can't smell it. Oh wow! I don't Not recommend that it, for right? just casual <laughs> sipping. But okay. don't do that on glass number five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've poured a lot of wine on people that way. But That's for the patio pounding. That's. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is great. Pinot Grigio, usually from the Veneto, and then Prosciutto San Daniele, which is this little town of San Daniele that's right there. Great Pinot Grigio while you're in San Daniele, but I gotta make a trip there. I know, I'm sure it's really good in Monterey too. <laughs> awesome, so this cool. Is super tasty. I can see this like after a beach trip. Oh, absolutely. Kick back. Yeah. Nice fruitiness, especially if you've got salt on your skin. Yeah. You're sweaty and salt oh, yeah. in the ocean. Mega refreshing. Yeah. Yum. Some people like that. <laughs> Some people would like that. Yeah. <laughs> Delicious. It is. It's really, really nice. Cool. So, you wanna try another one? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. So the next one is a Sauvignon Blanc, and this one is Matanzas Creek. So this is a property in Sonoma County, okay. so other California wine. And um, this one has got a little bit of an extra different clone of Sauvignon Blanc in it. So okay. a Muscat clone, which sounds a little like Muscat, mm -hmm. which a lot of people like Moscato, so they might be sort of familiar with what that's like. And it gives it a little bit more of a peachy, um, Sort of tropical note, okay. a little bit. So it's really, really pretty. And a teeny tiny bit of Simeon, which is another great variety that's often blended with Sauvignon Blanc, especially in Bordeaux, mm -hmm. uh, which is where this wine would classically be from in France, from Bordeaux or from the Loire Valley. Um, Sancerre, so it's the great variety of Sancerre. And this, so crisp, fresh Sauvignon Blancs, of course, with melon and prosciutto would be lovely, but with fresh um, greens and fresh herbs and anything having to do with the garden, Okay. pretty much. Anything green, any sort of vegetable. What do you like? What do you think? So good, good for a starting. Start really, really selling, good for like starters. So this too, you can, you know, when you come home after work, this as well. When you come home after work, you can have a glass of this because it's really refreshing. Mm -hmm. um, it's really light. It's really flavorful. 
Um, so you could have it without food, but it's, it's super flavorful, so it matches very well with really intensely um, smelling herbs, like you know, we've got some Thai basil here and some tarragon. Um, it smells like it's fresh mint, like, like fresh herb. Like it does, serious, right? Serious, serious vegetal herb, like herbaceousness in there. Mm -hmm. Well, it's very typical for Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. I really love that element of it. And I think that it also has a lot of tropical fruit as well, so it's not just dominated by right. that green. Right. Um, but it has a lot of pineapple and like guava and passion fruit, which helps to balance it. Gotcha. And that kind of softens it up a little bit. It does. Okay. It does. And then uh, California Sauvignon Blanc is not as intense sometimes as New Zealand or even as Sancerre. Okay. So it's a little bit of the softer side of Sauvignon Blanc, which is kind of cool. So when people who hate like a Sauvignon Blanc, they're like, it tastes like a green pepper or something right. like that. Maybe they should go for a California. Not a California, yeah, because it'll have more tropical fruit. And if you get any of those green notes, yep. they tend to come across like in here is more of that sort of a sweet basil or sweet tarragon. It's right. not a... It's not the main, like right. the main show. It's not the main show. Cool. Okay, I'm ready to go. Okay. Good, right? Kind of makes your face do that a little bit, a little bit. That's the acid in there, and it's um, back in my like, yes, yeah. Acid is really refreshing, okay? It's maybe a bit jarring if you haven't had any wine yet <laughs> <laughs> for the day. It's like, ooh, what just happened? Good morning, uh, but it also kind of pinches your face, it gives you what I like to call grapefruit face, oh, okay? Uh, but it also makes you salivate, yeah. So your, your mouth is watering, gotcha, which is you know, a couple things are happening too. You're refreshed, you know, it's refreshing when your mouth waters, yep. But it also gets your stomach juices kind of going. Yeah. And gets you hungry for food. So. Okay. Perfect like also, aperitif, though, huh? Yeah, right perfect aperitif. Yeah. Yeah. And because it is so crisp and lemony, so, you know, on the palate, it's a lot of those things we talked about on the nose, but lemon, lime, and grapefruit, and peach, and mango, um, sort of like a squeeze of lemon over everything. Mm -hmm. So think about the Sauvignon Blanc being the squeeze of lemon with your food. So anything you would put a squeeze of lemon on, mm -hmm. Sauvignon Blanc would work. Awesome. I could see this right before you start a meal. Really get your guests kind of laid back, right? Get your, get your taste buds going, ready for the meal to come. And and get it nice and cold. Yeah. Do you have any tips for people? Like, do you have to serve the same wine throughout the night, or are you able to absolutely kind of mix in? Absolutely not. And you can see we've got absolutely <laughs> You could, but... Um, now, I like to have a whole range, and you can see we have a whole range here on the table. We're going to be mostly talking about these. Um, but you could, like, say if this were your meal, which I guess you could sort of make a meal out of this. Um, you could start, say, with the Pinot Grigio, like as your aperitif, and maybe as before you sit down with some melon and some prosciutto. And then once you sit down for the meal, move into the Sauvignon Blanc with your fresh salad course. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to be talking about some roasted beets here with goat cheese, um, which we're going to pair here with a rosé, but also with a lighter red. Now you could, if somebody wanted something different, say you have somebody in your crowd that hates Sauvignon Blanc or thinks they hate Sauvignon Blanc, you could pour them something like the Riesling. You kick them or, out at that point, right? You know, leave. <laughs> yeah, so absolutely. You just open the door and boot them out. It's and not welcome. They're not allowed back. Yeah. So that's just a bad dinner guest. Right. No. <laughs> uh, but you could pour like the Caramel Road Riesling would work also, which has got a little bit of sugar to it, a little sweetness. So if somebody likes a little bit of an off-dry wine, that mm -hmm. would work well and would pair beautifully there with fresh fruit. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so there's a bunch of different things you could do. And you didn't have to, you don't have to stick with one color. You could go from white to rosé to red, and then back to white if you wanted to. Okay. No rules. No rules. No rules. I mean, there's some general things that you can say follow, but, but, right. but there's always ways you can break them. So. Right. I like that. Okay. okay I'm excited about this rosé. So okay. What's going Good. on So rosé. Yeah. Got a variety here for glasses yeah. around me. Yeah. So this is the La Crema Rosé. This is a Pinot Noir Rosé. This is from the Russian River Valley, so okay. also from California. And this is the same grape variety that we have coming up next in the Cambria. And that's why I thought that these would both pair really well with the uh, beets. Okay. So roasted beets, and that's just with a little goat cheese. Pinot Noir has a great acidity also, okay. which is great with goat cheese, because goat cheese has a fair amount of acid. So when it comes to pairing wine and food, one of the few rules are that if you have a food with acid, you need a wine with acid. Okay. Um, otherwise, one That's of the two things longer. will taste flat. Right. Gotcha. So goat cheese tends to be a little sharp. So something like this with a lot of acidity, Pinot Noir with a lot of acidity is mm -hmm. a perfect pairing. Okay. And then beets to me as well have a nice sweet earthiness to them. Sort of a also, someone is wondering, because now that you're on the rosé, how, how is that made? Like, is oh, it how different? is rosé yeah. made? Okay. 
It's made by delicious little rosé elves that just come over. That's always what I imagine. I know, it would be nice. Um, no, not really. That is not how it's made. So um, we take Pinot Noir grapes. So it, they're red grapes, which, yeah, they're red grapes. Some places in the world you can make a white wine and put a little red wine in it. Um, but for most quality rosés, they're not made that way. So they get, take the Pinot Noir grapes, which are red, when they come into the winery and they crush them, just as you would for making red wine. Um, and then you let the juice and the skin sit together for a little while, because the color comes from the skin of the grape, and when it's sitting there in the juice, it starts to leach out, just like the beets right. um, did earlier all over the plate. Just so you did there. <laughs> right? The beets and the... Yeah. It's a little bit like that, so it bleeds the, the juice a little bit. Yeah. And then they take the skins off and make it like a white wine, pretty much. So mm -hmm. then it's just pink as opposed to being red. But it also doesn't have the tannin. So that's the way this one is made. So just a little bit of skin contact. Yeah. So this is the same grape. I mean, these two, you yes. can have a red wine and a rose. Absolutely. A Pinot Noir grape. And I'm actually going to pour a little, just so you can see, I mixed those two wines together. I feel like a lot of people that, you know, this is news to, to many of us, that it, it, the Pinot Noir is it, it is the same grape. It's so not, now you, you can know. see here in my left hand. Yeah. Um, or on the left, rather. This is the Pinot Noir. <laughs> It'll be the left to some people. Um, this is the Bench Break Pinot Noir, and you can see it's red, although it's a paler red color, and then here we have the rosé, which of course is very pale. Oh, wow. But same grape, which is pretty cool. You can see how they're, they're you know, they're siblings. Let's see what though. you think about the smell, if they smell similar. Let's see. Well, they're from different places. This is from Russian River, and this is from um, Santa Barbara. Rosé almost smells like can like like a Jolly Rancher or something fruity, a bit, like yeah. a little tiny bit of sweetness. Right, although it's not going to be sweet. It's it's a pretty dry rosé, but I yeah. versus like this the the the, the red smell. It smells a little bit earthier. I want to say mm -hmm. like a little deeper. Mm -hmm. This smells a little lighter, a little bit. This is your job. This is yeah. <laughs> you just like to know if you just botch all the But other people think, no, no, that's really good. And a lot of that has to do with that skin contact we were just talking about. So okay. this one has some maybe deeper, um, deeper smells, maybe more uh, complex aromas to it yep. because it spent more time with the juice, with the skin. Yeah. So it, it pulled out more of those aromas. But this was just a short time. So you Got just it. get mostly the fruity sort of aromas to it and... And this is younger as well, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. yes, Got yes. It. Gotcha. So this is a 2015 and this one should be 2014, I believe. 2013. Gotcha. So, yes. And rosés you would want to drink pretty quickly. So you wouldn't want to, like, buy a ton of it and sit it away and, like, save it for next year and the right. following year and the following year. It just doesn't really get better. So. Gotcha. So the perfect thing to get during you the summer. Drink it. Exactly. Yes. Stick it in the fridge, drink yeah. it with your friends. Yeah. And a rosé is really popular. It's really good. That's delicious. It is really good. And it's actually not sweet. No, it's not. It it's got a, some fruitiness, but yeah. it's dry. Yeah. Because that's always my biggest thing with rosé, because I don't want a sweet wine, but I love the color of it. Right. I usually, like, if I find a good one, it's super great, but it's so hard to, right. like, pinpoint where those are. But. And sometimes it's hard to know, but one thing you can do um, that's a really good, just sort of, it's not really a trick, right there on the bottle somewhere okay back here so here's the alcohol percentage so this one is 13 and a half percent alcohol um, the alcohol and the sweetness usually go kind of hand in hand so if you have a wine that's going to be a little bit sweet like the Carmel Road has a little bit of sweetness to it our alcohol here is hiding it's been shy it's, <laughs> it's 12 Mm -hmm. I think that says 12 or 13. Yeah, 12 or 13. Um, so there's a little bit of sugar in this one. That's hard to tell with this one because it's not really very sweet. Mm -hmm. But say we were talking about a white Zinfandel. Like you want to be sure you don't get a white Zinfandel or some of the sweeter style of rosé. Look at the alcohol. At 13.5%, this one's going to be pretty dry. Normal wines are usually about 12, 13, 13.5%. And if it's going to be a little sweeter, it'll be under that. So 10, 11, even lower sometimes for German Rieslings can be like 8 Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. And still, and so they're going to be a little sweeter. So the higher the alcohol in general, the drier. Why? Some double win. <laughs> yeah, that's good to know. Right? That's good to know. Yeah. And it may not always be true, but do you like the rosé? I love. I've, I love all rosé. Yeah. Most are as long as it's on the dry side. 
And it's really versatile. I mean, it actually would go with pretty much everything, everything that's here. And that's yeah. what people, I think, like about it, too. It's just, if you did want to just serve one wine throughout the meal, you know, in the summer, rosé would be a perfect choice. It's such a crowd pleaser. It it, really, like, at really first, is. I wanted this, the, my, upon first sniff, I wanted a bite of melon. And then after, after it was kind of done chilling in my mouth a little bit, I wanted prosciutto. Like, right. I wanted something a little bit salty. Yeah. So... I think that's a pretty versatile, versatile wine to have on hand. It is, and people love it. It's very popular. And then, as far as pre in case people are concerned um, when purchasing, um, just for our consumers, what, what what price point are we talking about here, and how much should you be spending for a quality bottle of rosé? Oh, okay, for rosé, um, I mean you could get probably a pretty good rosé for around ten dollars. Trying to think of the last time I bought one that was under ten dollars. Um, I probably did because I bought one fairly recently. But you can, you can spend you can spend a lot on some rosé. Generally, I would say between ten and twenty dollars, you're okay. going to find a lot of really good rosé. Okay. Um, you'll find some for under, certainly. Yeah. Um, and you'll find some for over. There's actually some rosés I've seen in the market for one hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars a bottle. Which oh wow! Is kind of crazy, but they're little specialty items. Yeah. Not every day. For a special occasion. Right. Not everyday rosé. But everyday rosé, you say at least Everyday rosé. Yeah, like $10 or so, 10 to $15. That's in my budget, right for sure. And that should be a hashtag, too, everyday rosé. Everyday rosé. <laughs> everyday rosé. It should be a hashtag. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's, this yeah. is absolutely delicious. So delicious. And um, someone's wondering, because I know you said that the rosé is like very versatile, but do you have a favorite appetizer to pair with rosé, or like with Ooh. this rosé in particular? That's a good question. That is a good question. It probably would vary from rosé to rosé because they can be quite different. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. I don't know why all of a sudden I just thought about buffalo cauliflower. Oh. I honestly don't know why that just popped in why my not? head. Yes. Maybe because I was thinking about eating. Um, <laughs> who knows? I don't know. Uh, but that would actually, that's kind of hot right now, I guess, yeah. the buffalo cauliflower totally. thing. I think I was reading about it. Yeah. Um, but the spiciness of that, actually, this would be really, really good because it would offset that. Not that it would be the perfect pairing, necessarily. Um, berries are really good with it. Anything that has some fresh, like, strawberries and salads with fresh, um, fresh berries, mm -hmm. I think are mm -hmm. very popular. And berries are certainly in season. Um, I would nibble at your... Yeah, the salumis, like, the prosciutto yeah, salumis. salumis. And they're so easy, too. Even some like like a watermelon feta situation, oh, or something like that. Maybe exactly. because it's pink. I don't know. Right. If I'm being no, too but basic. actually that's really delicious. <laughs> yeah, that's another favorite summer salad. Oh yeah, yeah, so delicious. Awesome. That's actually really really good. The watermelon, and it's not so sweet. You know, even the watermelon. Right. You know, there's some sugar, but it's so fresh. It's just refreshing. Yeah. And this kind of reminds me of a little watermelon. Totally. I think that's what I was smelling on on the nose when I was right. like, it just smells juicy. Yeah. It yeah. Does smell juicy. But it's definitely not sweet. Really tasty. Really tasty. Cool. Excellent. And then we're ending with? Well, we have one. We have two more, actually. Two more, okay. We didn't really talk very much about this, but this is the Pinot Noir. So, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, same, same grape. grape. Same grape. Okay. Um, this is Cambria. So, this one here is Santa Maria Valley. So, this is a little bit further south. So, here we were in Monterey. So, this is a little bit more towards that area. These were both more northern California area. Gotcha. So Santa Maria, um, east-west facing valleys, and it's a nice cool place to grow Pinot Noir. Um, I think probably a lot of people think about the Russian River when they think about Pinot Noir in California, but there's a lot of it down in this area, and some of the more famous Pinot Noirs come from that area. Okay. But they're nice and light in style, and you can see from the color, they're not too heavy. Totally. Yeah. Gorgeous color. Really, really pretty color. And a little lighter in style, and it's a great summer red. Yeah. Um, because Pinot Noir is one of those wines that you could even serve a little bit chilled. Right. It doesn't have a lot of tannin. Um, and same with the Zinfandel. We're going to see we don't have a lot of tannin. Okay. Um, and tannin right. in red wines are those proteins that will stick to your mouth and sort of make it seem really, really dry. Right. So it can be really off-putting, especially if you're not eating something or have anything to sort of combat the tannin. Yeah. Um, but Pinot Noir doesn't have a lot. So okay. you can have it on its own. You can have it with food. It goes with a wide variety of foods. Got you know, it. You could even put a little chill on it. So if some so if some people say, just for our our consumers out there, I don't really love red wine. It gives me a headache, or the tannins don't agree with me. Would right. you recommend a pinot noir? A pinot noir would be a really really good one. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And there too, I wouldn't go with a very serious one because sometimes the real serious pinot noirs can have a little bit more tannin. Gotcha. So if the tannins bother you, 
and that was just a very general sort of statement. But, right. Yeah. But a lot of times they will have a little bit more okay. tannin because they've been on the skins a little longer. Yeah. Because they're meant to age. And so. I know you said that to serve it like a little bit chilled because we had uh, the wines of chili in a little bit ago talking about how you can like chill red wine and yes. so you like that's a thing that. I, like a, oh, that's a absolutely. Great new thing to do. Um, and Pinot Noir is such a good candidate for that because it's a lighter style wine. When you chill down a red wine, it will make the tannins seem drier. It can. Um, and it can make the acid seem sharper in a white, which is a good thing mm. uh, because you want it to be refreshing and it will in a red too. So to do it with a Pinot Noir, which is a low tannin red, makes a lot of sense. So with every wine, not so much, but Pinot Noir, you could chill it down maybe a little further. And then some other reds, just because of the fact of uh, tannins, it doesn't have a lot of tannin. That's so good to know, because some people just completely cast cast off red wine during the summer, and they're like, right. "Yeah, you can't. We want to drink something cold, but right. you can totally chill it. It's it's it, as you said, if it's a lower tannin, you can totally chill it. Yeah. Cool. And so, like the Pinot Noir, this is kind of a dark um, rosé, actually, dark Pinot Noir rosé. Right. So you might not want to do it as cold as that, but mm -hmm. but you could approach that and almost think of it like a an almost rosé. It actually, it's part of the, the nose on it now that it's, maybe it's just because it was sitting there for a second, but it actually smells a little bit more similar to the rosé. More so maybe than I'm just, maybe I'm just Maybe I'm just sipping it a little bit more now, but um, <laughs> maybe. But uh, I can kind of see how they're, they're related. Yeah, the rosé does smell a little different and it will yeah. change the aromatics, but I'll check it too. Just make sure the wine is good. Test it, right? Quality control. Yeah. Quality control, I like that. <laughs> Oh yeah, you're right, absolutely. But this is more like darker flavors, like more dark black raspberry yep. and more sort of herbal notes to it. Yeah. Then there was here, I think this didn't have as much of the herbal notes. Totally. But similar fruit notes and they get a little bit of wood, some um, spicy. Yeah, like, this wine has seen spouses. some things, yeah. like definitely. Yeah. It's been around a little bit longer than that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've seen a little time, gained seen a little some experience. Yep. <laughs> Stronger for it. Stronger <laughs> for it. <laughs> You made it. <laughs> and one thing too that I like about Pinot Noir is its flexibility at the dinner table. So we totally. did talk about the flexibility here. Um, and because it's low tannin and it's got a good amount of acidity to it, um, it pairs really well with lots of different things. So gotcha. um, you could do it with the grilled skewers here. You know, they're not, okay, they're, they're pretty meaty. But some chicken, yeah. you know, the chicken, the beef certainly yeah. would work here because there's a lot of vegetables. Uh -huh. um, but fish works really well. You would do seafood. Absolutely. Because people sometimes are like, oh, no, no, don't do the red with the seafood. Right. Do the white with the seafood. I know. But you could, you could oh, do and that. This is perfect for that. And okay. the reason you don't is because of the tannin. Got it. Omega-3 fatty acids in a lot of your fattier fish react yeah. badly with tannins. And it gives you a metallic right. sort of taste in the mouth. And also salt. So when you think about seafood right from the sea as opposed to maybe like rivers and lakes and right. streams, Got it. Um, is salty. And so tannin and salt is also not so great. So sometimes shellfish can react differently because of the Got salt it. content mm -hmm. and the tannic red wine. Like you wouldn't want to do like shrimp and Cabernet Sauvignon. Got it. But you could do a light Pinot Noir like this with some grilled shrimp and that would be perfect. Got it. Wow, yeah. we're learning a lot. <laughs> really are. You have to be ready for the rest of the summer. It's good to know. This is delicious. Ready to drink the rest of these wines and pair them with <laughs> lots of things. Yes, absolutely. We're going to go out to dinner after this. All right. right. <laughs> delicious. Got to go out. We've got dinner right here. Now on a fresh beat. Yum. Yeah. It's so light. I mean, it's got a lot of personality, but it's still, it's not like a, a big red wine. It's nice and mellow. No, it's not. And the fact that you can chill it also makes it really really good for summer yeah absolutely that's yeah. so good to know it's such a great tip it's delicious you know a lighter style red like you mentioned people don't want to be they want to drink something cooler yeah. i also don't like a lot of tannin necessarily in the summer yeah so, so now we're done with that Excellent. so now one last one i think the quintessential summer red so these are all american wines i know that we just finished up with fourth of july but perfect fourth of july wine there you go or 6th or 7th or 8th or 9th 11th of, of July. July. Yeah. 11th of July. The month of July. It's good for any time. Yep. Remember it when Thanksgiving comes around. Um, Zinfandel. Nice color. Yeah, it's a beautiful color. Wow. Yeah, Zinfandel is one of those wines that people, I think, think about. And it was one of the first reds that I ever had. Okay. It was also one of the first wines I ever had, but oh. I had it in the pink version. Oh, uh, white same oh, Okay. Same grape. Gotcha. Same thing. Gotcha. So a little bit of skin contact gives you a pink wine. Okay. And very often white Zinfandel is 
is made in a sweeter style, so a lot of people think white Zinfandel is going to be sweet. Right. But it doesn't have to be. Okay. But red Zinfandel is a totally different animal. It's completely Apparently. different. It's, it's dark yes. red. Yeah. It also doesn't really have a lot of tannin, so it's a good summer red, and that's why people pair it a lot with barbecue. But it's also super fruity. So you get lots of brambly fruit, like blackberry, boysenberry, mm -hmm. mulberry, huckleberry. I almost always get a little aroma of peach yogurt, which seems very weird, but mm. <laughs> something something in Zinfandel always reminds me of peach yogurt. I can see that. A little right power yeah. suggestion. Right. <laughs> <laughs> when you say that, I do smell, nice oh, Oreo smell of peach yogurt. I, yes, <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> and um, Jamie watching is wondering, because we're still on reds, how long should you chill reds for? Like, is there a max? Ah, Does it vary excellent. depending on what kind very of walk red? I guess it depends maybe on, are you gonna just chill it right before you're serving it or are you gonna put it in the fridge and let it hang for a while and then pull it out before? So one of two ways. So if you wanted to like chuck it all in the fridge, that would be my method. Chuck it all in the fridge early because you're gonna forget later. <laughs> that would be the way I would need to do it. Uh, then <laughs> pull it out of the fridge maybe 15 minutes before you wanna serve it. So there's that. Or if you are super organized and you chill things as you need them, which is not me, then you could put it on ice maybe 15 to 20 minutes before you want to serve it. And that should be enough of a chill. Gotcha. Or pop it in the fridge or even in the freezer. And the best way to cool it down in the freezer is to wrap it in a wet like dish towel and then put it in the freezer because then oh. you have the towel covers the whole bottle. Gotcha. That's a new trick. All of the tips. That's excellent. Fast chilling. So yeah, so Zinfandel, and with this one, what um, we did actually, we have a, um, a recipe, we have a lot of recipes on our website, Okay. and um, we have a really big culinary team at Kendall Jackson, mm -hmm. which is really, really cool. I've never had a bad meal. And so we have a lot of recipes on the site, and barbecue sauce here is actually made with Zinfandel. So you can use the wine in some of the food that you're cooking to create a bridge, oh. and that creates sort of a natural pairing. That's a great idea. Yeah. So no matter so what like what would you use you would do this in a barbecue sauce for grilled a barbecue meats, sauce else? Or, yeah with grilled meats with grilled vegetables too so okay. if you're not doing uh, meats with grilled mushrooms yep I always go to mushrooms so I think there's got to be another vegetable eggplant I guess would be another hearty kind of meaty meaty, meaty vegetable type of veggie I see I I think mushrooms I think you nailed like a nice meaty portobello a meaty portobello yeah like, and it can handle sometimes yeah. that. Yeah, uh, heftier sauce. Yep. Um, but spicy sauces, so sometimes barbecue can be quite spicy. Mm -hmm. And if it's very hot, like with um, jalapeno peppers, yep. then the one thing you'd want to watch out for is the alcohol. Okay. So I mentioned here to look for, sort of look for a higher alcohol, not super high, when right. you want a dry one. Right. But here, if you are pairing it with something super fiery, hot, spicy, this one has 15% alcohol. So the oh. higher the alcohol in the wine, the hotter your food's gonna be. Oh. So if you like that sensation, then this is fine. And 15's not, not that high for Zinfandel. Um, but you might want to either crank down the heat in your food mm -hmm. or maybe go with something a little lighter. If so this like is actually going spicy. to intensify. It can intensify the heat. The heat of, okay, of your grill. Yes, it Got can it. intensify the heat. Alcohol can. Gotcha. And depending on how spicy it is, yep. almost anything can exacerbate that heat. Gotcha. Some people like that though. I've actually seen other wines infused with like jalapeno pepper. Yeah, I could see how that would that would help a barbecue sauce too. I mean, well, yeah, some people really like that. Yeah, you know, totally. if they want to sweat, then and yeah. Do you infuse wine the same way you infuse like other alcohols? Just like put it in a jar with them and. Have I guess so. I think it might. Yeah, I mean, that's the way I would totally do it at home. I mean, not in a professional capacity. I'm sure that there must be some so. safety measures you would have to <laughs> right. to follow so that you didn't end up with something weird in the, yeah. in the bottle. Yeah. And I would assume so. Alcohol will help to extract some of those compounds. I don't know if they do it beforehand or after, but... Yeah. Cool. Gotcha. Yeah. How do you like this one for them? I love it. A little chocolatey, a little cocoa-y. Yeah. It's, it's definitely the... I, I, I see this kind of progression here. I, I think this is the, the, the kind of deepest most multi-dimensional mm -hmm. one we've had so far. There's a lot of different levels happening in it. And it's robust and it's full, but it's still not super tannic. Mm -hmm. So this is what I might not serve like as chilled as this. Yeah. But you could chill it a little bit. But I think if you chilled this one too much, if you chilled any of them too much, you're not going to get much of the flavor. It'll yeah. It'll seem thinner. Yeah. 
So the temperature on this is okay. I actually. like this temperature. Yeah. It seems it's a right in cool. the middle. Right. Yeah. Yep. And that's good for summer too because it's hot out. But burgers, pizzas, barbecue. Yep. Go for it then. Yeah. Got it. It's perfect. Very good to know. Well, cheers. Cheers. Thanks so much for sharing these with You're us. You're very welcome. Anytime. And are the I know that most of these are based in California, but are these easy to get nationally? Can our consumers come yes. online? These should all be pretty available nationally. Okay. Um, the one probably in the hottest demand and least supply are probably the rosés at the moment because they tend to go very quickly in the summer. Because rosé is having a bit of a moment. Right. Rosé is having a moment, which yep. is great. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And many of our rosés sold out uh, right away. The ones oh, wow. we didn't make a lot of. So. Um, well, so there is a little why. bit of a scarcity. Get it while it's hot. Yeah. Uh, but they all should be, you should be able to find them all throughout the country. So La Crema and Cambria are some of our, our brands you can find everywhere. Matanzas Creek for sure. Um, Ed Meads, yeah. They should be all, all available. Awesome. And if you're really lucky, next year when the rosé comes out, there's also a Barrymore rosé. Ooh. Which is also really beautiful. I think you no. just got another invite back, the best product. I'll right. have you back to talk about Next that week one, for the for very sure. Perfect. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Molly, thank you again so thank much. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Awesome. Cheers. Happy summer, guys. Happy we'll summer. See you next Thursday. Have a good one.